Hey everyone, do you remember the iPod? Chances are at some point in your life you've encountered at least one of these devices. Maybe it was one of those little mini iPod shuffles or nanos. Maybe it was an iPod touch before you got your first smartphone. Maybe it was an iPod classic or some other version of the iPod. I can almost guarantee though, one has been part of your life at some point or another. Until it wasn't. Well, today, I'll be talking about why I still use this iPod in 2022, and why the iPod shouldn't have died the way it did. In this video, brought to you by Musicbed, my number one source for high quality curated music that I use throughout all of my YouTube videos. Learn more at the link in the description. Okay, so I've collected a few iPods over the years. Some of them I still have, and others I don't. So first up I have the second generation iPod Shuffle, the fourth and final iPod Shuffle, the iPod Nano 5th generation in this beautiful purple blue color, the iPod Nano 6th generation which I wore as a watch throughout high school prior to the Apple Watch being released, the original iPod Mini in silver, and the OG second generation iPod which is pretty much the same as the original iPod with a few minor changes. But this is the main one that I use. And I think all of these iPods are just so incredibly fascinating. They're all different in their own way, but they still have features that carry across all the different generations. They have their own strengths and their own weaknesses and problems, and you can really see the evolution of this device over many years. And there are so many generations which I don't have, but definitely want to grab at some point. It's easily one of Apple's most interesting and unique product lines. They just kept evolving and evolving and evolving until the very slow demise of this device over many years. And today, it's basically just a footnote on Apple's website. But why did the iPod start to fizzle out? Well, it's pretty simple. This guy was released the original iPhone. And since 2007, the iPod started to decline year after year after year until it is where it is today. The iPhone pretty much marked the end of the iPod because why carry around a whole separate device when you can just store music on your phone very easily? And then we saw the release of streaming services like Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, and even YouTube and SoundCloud letting you stream any music ever to your phone, making the idea of the iPod outdated and redundant in many ways. Why carry a whole separate device to play just a few of your tracks when you can stream basically every song in existence to your main phone? That's it. That's why the iPod died. I mean, you can still buy that iPod Touch I mentioned, but it's basically the same as an iPhone without the calling features. It's good for kids who are not ready for a smartphone, and if you just want to have a second device that you can do all your iOS things on, it's great. But it's really just not an iPod like these. And man, there is something so special about holding a classic iPod in your hand. It just feels amazing. I actually bought this iPod almost 10 years ago from someone in the back parking lot of a McDonald's for like $50. It was a pretty good deal. But keep in mind, there was no charger included. Well, I mean, there was, but it was pretty much a fire hazard. The battery lasted like two minutes on a charge, it had to be replaced. And this thing has a firewire port. So pretty much transferring any music to this device with a modern computer is next to impossible without the right adapters and hardware. So despite all these problems, I bought this thing and it's just been a design piece in my home for the last few years now. Until recently, I decided I want to get this thing working again. So I ended up buying a replacement battery which actually has a higher capacity than the original one. I did a quick swap, it was super easy, it took maybe 15 minutes and honestly it probably would have taken me less time if I wasn't filming. And I put it all back together and that was it. Basically, a brand new iPod with a brand new battery. I then used some of the free mp3 download codes from some of the vinyls I've bought over the last year or so, and bought some of my favorite albums digitally to put on this iPod. That's something I haven't done in a very long time. And to actually put music on this iPod, it was super easy. I first had to transfer the mp3s to a USB stick, plug the USB stick into an old PowerBook G4 I bought, imported those tracks into iTunes, plugged in the iPod with a firewire to firewire cable, then it's as simple as just hitting sync. And after a few moments, New music on a 20 year old vintage iPod. Super easy. Okay, let's be real. Why? 
why go through this process to carry this brick of a device that's really only good for listening to music and playing Brick Breaker, and that's it? Why spend money on individual albums when one album is the price of one month of Apple Music or Spotify, with millions and millions of tracks available instantly? Well, believe me, I've asked myself all those questions many, many times, and I realized all those points are the reasons why I still use an iPod in 2022. They sound like negatives, but they're actually the positives of this device, in a different way than you might think. You know how when you pick up a book versus an e-reader or an iPad, it has a certain feeling to it? Or a cassette tape when you pop open the case, stick it into a cassette deck, fast forward or rewind, hit play, or browse through the vinyls at your local record shop and come home and throw on that incredible find. These are tactile feelings. They feel special. They feel important. I love music. I always have something playing in the background at home. And just throwing on a track on Apple Music is great. But finding that same track on an iPod, listening to the hard drive spin up for that second, switching tracks with tactile buttons, it feels different. It feels wonderful. It feels like even more of a special experience listening to some of my favorite albums. It's hard to explain beyond that. And those limited albums you have on your 5, 10, 15, 20, or 120 gigabyte iPod feel special every time you throw them on. And I'm no audiophile, but they definitely do sound better playing off the iPod. And at a time when artists are being paid next to nothing from big streaming platforms, a purchase of an album on iTunes or Bandcamp can actually go a long way in supporting the artist directly. We don't need an iPod in 2022, just like we don't need vinyls or CDs or even books. But these are wonderful, beautiful objects to have in our lives that, while small, make our lives just a little bit better, and they feel more permanent and lasting. They offer a whole different level of experience than just having everything on your phone or tablet, and sometimes you just want to detach from your phone. So I'm not saying we should all just ditch our phones today and switch back to the iPod life. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying though is if anything in this video was interesting to you, grab an iPod off eBay or your local used device market and swap out the battery. It costs next to nothing if you have to. Buy an album, transfer those songs over and just sit and enjoy your music. It really is a wonderful experience. So that's why I still use this iPod in 2022, for the feeling, for the sound, these are truly just such cool devices, even today. What's also pretty cool is today's sponsor, Musicbed. If you're like me, you know the importance of having great background tracks throughout your video productions, and you also know that finding the perfect track can be quite difficult. And that's where Musicbed comes in. Musicbed has an incredible library of music you can use in all of your video productions, whether it be for YouTube videos, films, ads, TV shows, they have it all. They offer a great subscription program with unlimited access to their amazing collection of music based on the type of work you do. And with Sync ID, it makes it easy to use all of these tracks in your YouTube videos without any stress of copyright strikes or other issues. You're golden. And I gotta say, the tracks that Musicbed has are unparalleled in quality. They have many great genres, incredible musicians, a great filtering system so you can find the exact mood and type of music you want for your video. There's tracks with lyrics and without, and you'll be able to easily find the perfect track for your next video production. So no stress, just the right music you need. And they're also all about supporting artists. Over the last 10 years, Musicbed has paid out over $100 million directly to musicians around the world which is pretty incredible. Musicbed has been my go-to for years and I love it. And you can get started with Musicbed today with a free account and sample some of their amazing tracks. And when you're ready to start using these tracks in your videos, use the code KNOOPSY22 at checkout to get one month free with the purchase of any annual subscription type at the link in the description. Thanks to Musicbed for sponsoring this video. And that's it. So if you see me over on Twitter or Instagram talking about my love for this device, now you know why. And if you're still using an iPod, tell me in the comments down below which one you're using and why. Or send me a photo on Twitter or Instagram, I'd love to see which iPod that you're personally rocking these days. Also, like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.